Zhu would give him another shot. Colorful gear for Judah. You can expect the same from DeMarcus Corley, who is as immaculately groomed as any fighter we've seen. And of course, we talked about Judah's Brooklyn roots. DeCorley comes from one of the roughest sections of Washington, D.C. And he acknowledges there might be some street cred on the line here tonight. A big week for DeMarcus. His seventh child, second daughter, was born this past Monday. And in addition to his own seven, he had a brother who was shot to death in a crime incident in D.C. earlier this year. And the brother was also the father of seven. DeMarcus says in addition to taking care of his own, he plans to try to provide for his brother's seven children as well. And then there's the feminine side of him, Jim. He looks a little like Queen Nefertiti here in this outfit that he designed. Uh, he took a sewing class in high school so that he could make his own outfits. He also professes a like for women's undergarb, which has uh, brought him some kind of a notoriety. Uh, Zab Judah held up some under things at the weigh-in yesterday, but those kinds of things can only inspire a guy who likes them. <laughs> On the bout sheet, where for other fighters there is a space for trunks, in Corley's case, they line out the word trunks and put in the word sheet, he himself says, I wear a sheath in the ring. That's the sheath that you're looking at. He was ridiculed by another fighter in DC for wearing Victoria's Secret underwear, and he said, well, if women wear it, why can't I? But he says, at the end of the day, don't watch my clothes, watch the way I fight. And he sees himself as the puncher, in this bout against Judah tonight. So the two fighters are in the ring. Let's go to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the Orleans Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as we have a big night of action in store for you. And it's all brought to you by Don King Productions in association with the Orleans Hotel and Casino, HBO Sports and CM Exchange. This bout coming away is also brought to you by Main Events and is sanctioned by the WBO President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor Jessinth Bryan, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Introducing to you at this time are three judges scoring the bout from ringside from Las Vegas, Nevada, Dwayne Ford. Also from Las Vegas, Chuck Jumpa. And from West Palm Beach, Florida, Michael Pernick. And our third man of the ring, the referee in charge, working in this his 158th world title bout, fair but firm, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, red, and gray trunks, fighting out of and representing his home of Brooklyn, New York. He weighed in at the limit of 140 pounds even. His record stands at 28 wins, one loss, one no contest, with 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, introducing Zab, Super Judah. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing turquoise, yellow, and pink trunks, hailing from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. He weighed in at 139 and one half pounds. His record stands at 28 wins, one loss, one draw, with 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he is making the third defense of his title. Here is the WBO Junior Welterweight Champ. 
champion of the world, introducing DeMarcus Chop Chop Corley. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Cortez, our referee in charge, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of action scheduled. All right, come here. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. I want good sportsmanlike conduct, understood? Here, understand here? Okay, remember guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. Two Southpaws, Judah, who was raised as a black Jew and tends to throw tantrums before and after fights. Corley, who is trying to support 14 children, seven of them his own, and shops at Victoria's Secret for himself. You can't make it up. Do southpaws, and some would say that both have natural counterpuncher tendencies, so the question is who's gonna lead? Corley answered that question at our pre-fight meeting yesterday when he said, if somebody's gonna attack, it'll be me. I think I'm a bigger puncher than Zap. Judah, of course, would say exactly the opposite. Both these guys shave their eyebrows. Eyebrows, that's not a good idea. Twice. Always a chance of a scratch and a cut opening Double above it. those eyebrows. Double it. You want to keep razors away from your face and eyes, especially. Keep your boxing. Is that a boxing style or an inner city style? What is it, George? Well, just a style, I suppose. Hollywood style. Good, Chop. Nice and relaxed, smooth. There you go. Stay low, stay low. Zab Judah seems to be concentrating more. Keep He's been able to get Keep some out. shots Double to the body Double and get away from the bigger shots. Just stands in the pocket when he chooses. During undercard bouts, it took fans about 30 or 45 Double seconds jab. to begin booing if they didn't have big action in the first minute. We've got uh, an unusual Vegas crowd here at the Orleans because ticket prices are so much cheaper than for most of the big fights we brought you from larger casinos here. So there are a lot of fans who are getting a rare chance to see title prize fights and they wanted to see big action. But they're being kind to Judah and Corley who are fighting a tactical first round. Even for a softball, a softball is difficult to fight, believe me. Well, and of course, both these guys would say, oh, I do better against other southpaws because they're just mirrors of me. But you've pointed out, George, it's still the same thing. You're fighting somebody who looks different than your normal opponent. Yeah, and in the gym, seldom you see a softball ready to spar with you round after round. Judah was able to drive Corley back toward the ropes with an overhand left. One of the better punches of the round so far. Corley reaching with the left, short with both of them. Judah jabs him to the body to move him back. Little right hand up close by Corley. Judah after. bobs and weaves and gets a little closer afterwards. And you gotta watch, be careful when a guy gets closer after he, he misses him. He's trying to get in a big shot. Using his defense to set up his offense. Money, money. Judah with a huge left hand swing at the end of the first round. Grazed Corley, didn't really catch it. Man, you know what? That was a good round. But you got to double on your jab. He's trying to counter with his left hand, right? So throw a little short hook with that, okay? Relax a little more, but I want you to relax with good pace. You hear me? Always touch him. Touch him to the body, touch him to the shoulders. Break his rhythm, all right? Take a deep breath. That's good. Deep, deep, deep. Let the, then you go down. Find the triple. Find the triple, and then go right down the pipe. Right down the pipe. Okay? Come on. Come on. Pain. Pain. He's going to make you weak. Oh, 
Some wild swings. Just grazed, or barely grazed the chin of Judah. Judah is a much more stable fighter than he used to be. He's not using his legs much, not dancing around a lot, staying close to his opponent. What he's doing, and you really can't see it, Larry moves his right foot to the left and to the right of his opponent, which is footwork indeed, but it does not a lot of bounce to it. Very smart, Rich. CompuBox numbers in one. Judah landing 16 out of 51. Corley 7 out of 44. And of Judah's 51 attempted punches, 48 of them were jabs. Kind of a who's who of fighters in the house tonight. Evander Holyfield's here. Lloyd Mayweather Jr. is here. Bernard Hopkins is here. Haven't seen whether Judah's good friend Mike Tyson's in the house. There are a lot of fighters on hand to watch what's going on. Chris Bird, of course, is here. I don't think he ever misses a prize fight. He's pumping a jab, Jeff. Keep that jab going. Right. Just like that. Look. Quick. Quick you can clearly Quick. hear Quick. Zab Judah's dad, Yoel, in the background, Quick. telling Zab to keep the jab going and occasionally telling him to stay low. Corley again trying to wing some shots upstairs, and Judah gets a chance to counter with the left hand and lands it. Now Judah in a... More offensive position as he lowers his hands and begins to attack a little bit. None of that started to shake Corley at all. He came right back, got right back on his balance. The instinct of a guy when he starts clowning like that is to clown back with him. He didn't do it. Corley threw a left to the body. Missed Corley's, with the right hand upstairs. Corley is smart. Keep, try, keep touching the body. Keep touching the body. Keep touching. Turn it over top. Good, good. Left hand to the body by Corley, and now he goes back upstairs and starting to get closer to landing one of those shots. Uppercut misses for Judah. Corley bangs to the body one, two, three times. The thing about a good barber and weaver, once you get against the ropes, they don't have any place to go then, but get hit somewhere, especially in the body. Judah's making that mistake. Corley ripping Judah to the body again. Right hand shot there. And the uppercut attempted by Judah, blocked by Corley. Good defensive stuff on the inside by Demarcus Corley. And another right hand to the body. Misses with the left upstairs. This is the test of conditioning now. If Corley can keep him up against the rope, hitting him every now and then, he can do good. Corley's trainer, Bernard Roach, telling DeMarcus to stay to the body. That's where he's been effective here. Another combination, Corley punctuates the round. Much better round for DeMarcus Corley in the second. And mark your calendars, July 26th, a fistic night on HBO. First, the original boxing movie, Undefeated, starring John Leguizano. Then live boxing with Fernando Vargas taking on Fitz Vanderpool. August 16th, Boxing After Dark returns with a featherweight unification bout between Derek Gaynor and Juan Manuel Marquez. August 21 on HBO Latino, Tino. Tune in for the next Oscar De La Hoya de Presenta, Boxeo de Oro, featuring Jose Navarro. I messed that up. Oscar De La Hoya Presenta, Boxeo de Oro, featuring Jose Navarro. September 13 on HBO pay-per-view, the rematch between Oscar De La Hoya and Shane Mosley. Back in 2000, Mosley won a split decision victory over De La Hoya. Oscar is focused on revenge. HBO boxing for 30 years, building legends one round at a time. CompuBox numbers reversed a little bit in round two. This time it's Corley who threw more and landed more in the second round. And 34 of Corley's 56 attempted punches were power shots. He landed 12. Corley's right hand to the body was really the weapon that he got going in the second round. The thing about Corley is he's, he's so confident. You can't shake him. You make him miss, gets right back in front of you. Judah landed a reaching left hand. And what you do is try to shake those guys, make them do something that they ordinarily don't do so you can hit them. And Zab Judah hasn't done that yet. He can lose his confidence by taking those punches on the ropes. Keep touching. Step around. Step around. 
Demarcus Corley has had the nickname Chop Chop ever since he was an 11 year old amateur. One day he uh, went out to eat during an amateur competition and came back weighing 10 pounds more than the weight at which he had left. And his coach at the time said, I want you to chop your food up and I'll call you Chop Chop. Looks like there's some blood from uh, the nose of Chop Chop. He does him like that. Good left hand by Judah as Corley was trying to duck away from the right. Textbook boxing. Jab, 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 right hand. Then you come back with the hook, clean it up, and you get the knockdown. That didn't happen yet, but if he does. Corley landed a little left across the top, missed with the right cross, or the right uh, hook, I should say, following up. Corley jabbing to the body again. Chop, chop. And Judah does the feigning. He's trying to get his hand out from in front of him. And if he does, as you feign him, he drops his hand a little bit and you get your shot. Corley is not doing it. And more and more the profile which DeMarcus Corley predicted has emerged, which is Corley leads, tries to establish the action, and Judah plays off of him in counters. That may ultimately work to Judah's advantage. He seems more comfortable in his role. Judah's even jabbing to the chest now. That's where you really get some progress when you jab the guy to his chest. Now Corley starts throwing left hands upstairs and lands the second two after missing the first. Not big shots, just getting a little leather on it. Suddenly Judah becomes the leader. And hits Corley with a left hand and then a huge left cross. He's down. He's hurt. And that's a legitimate knockdown. A full-on legit knockdown after the big left cross landed by Zab Judah. Best punch of the fight. Corley acknowledging it. about him after going down. So Judah not able to do further damage in the remaining 10 seconds. This is what you, look, this is what you gotta do. You kinda wait, you understand what I'm saying? Stop waiting, put your hands together. Put them together, you hear me? Get back a little bit, let me get All right, keep your left hand up. How we going, shots a little short. All right. Come up and pop him. He gonna put the hands down again. You fake the left, bring the hook this time, fake it. He looking for left hand now. Fake it. Hey, hey, hey. Let's come back to hook. Fake it. Fake it. One, two, three. Roll. Back, right back with the jab. Late in the round. Until this point, we were getting more schlock and bore than shock and awe. But that punch followed by another big, clean left hook. Corley kind of walked into the second one. He was making the point that the first one hadn't hurt him. And the first one had hurt him, too. <laughs> and he had the presence to pull Judah down as he went down. When he fought Zoo, Judah got so excited about landing a big punch that he walked into a punch. Let's see if he shows a little bit more discipline here. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> Look at Jim. Two rounds to one. 29-27. Zam Judah. Jim, I gotta tell you something. You know, in, in that third round, I, I got a funny feeling that that was an awfully long round. I thought I heard the 10-second warning at the point where Zam Judah knocked him down. So that means when Corley got up, the bell should have rang. Be as it may, you gotta give Zab an extra point for knocking a guy off his feet. Zab won the first round. I like the hand speed of Zab Judah so far. Very quick hands, good punching. And the word from the truck. Where they have stopwatches is you're right, Harold. The round was about 10 or 15 seconds longer than expected. I have the fight one, one, and one. I thought neither fighter did enough to win the first round. Bottom line is the fight at this moment boils down to Judah knocked Corley down in the third round with a big left hand. No, he was able to bring all of that together with those jab, 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 right hand. And he's got to go right back to 
to what he what got him there. Don't don't jump off and start fainting with hooks. Go back to two or three jabs, and that right hand is wait, the left hand is waiting for you all night. If Judah can understand that, there it is. Don't get wild. Just set it up. If you can do it all night, be confident. Evidently, Corley's got a problem with two jabs. As the footwork with Judah. Judah. So the official tally now from the truck is that the third round was 19 seconds longer than normal. And, and now my question would be for the truck, if the round ends on time, is that before the knockdown? We'll find out the answer to that one as we go along here in round four. Yeah, officially it wouldn't matter. But, of course uh, it wouldn't matter, but uh, unofficially we want to know. Yeah, academically it's an interesting question. Judas got to understand it didn't happen with one punch. Set it up with the double and triple jabs. I think even this corner has kind of misunderstood that. Corley chasing Judah into the corner, but not able to land any punches. Judah has shown almost too so, so much self-discipline in that round, not trying to really test hey, Corley again. You doing that waving back? What I want you to do is take his body. And as these two guys fight at 140 pounds, Ricardo Mayorga warms up for the defense of his 147 pound world championship. Mayorga with his trainer, Hector Perez, in their dressing room, waiting for his second crack at Vernon Forest. He knocked him out in the third round, January 25, in Temecula, California, and has told anyone who will listen that he'll knock him out in the second round tonight. Whatever are the 20 best quotes in boxing oh, this year, Mayorga may have issued 19 of them or so in the last week. That's why I pumped three, four jam. Then let it go, then hook, then roll. All right? Keep testing that jam. Trying to make up for the vacuum of quotes from Vernon Forrest. And incidentally, the academic answer is that the knockdown happened before the three minute mark. So the overextension of the round has nothing to do with the fact that Judo was able to knock Corley down. He did that within the originally anticipated three minutes of the frame. Right, Harold Letterman is chomping at the bit to give us more information. Go ahead, Harold. Now, you know, let me step on our foot, all right? Watch that. Let's go. Like I've always said, you can't be saved by the bell, okay, in any round. Now, uh, Demarcus, we heard the 10 second warning. Demarcus Corley went down. Let's say he's down for eight seconds, for example. At the time he gets up, when a referee cleans off his gloves and it's time to box, that's when the bell should ring. So the bell should have rung in about three minutes and five seconds. They don't ring the bell at exactly three minutes when a guy's on the floor. They ring the bell when he gets up and he's ready to fight. In other words, when the referee cleans off his gloves and determines that he's able to continue, that's when they should have rung the bell. Thank you, Harold. Clean, One of the clean. stories of the fight through the first four rounds, Judah landing his jab with much greater frequency. Judah 41 out of 162 jabs, Corley only 18 out of 113. So Zab has been the master of the space between them. And that helps to account for his edge in the bout. Zab Judah turns almost ordinary when he stops using that little jab. He's waiting for something to happen as he get hit himself. Once he starts working that jab, put a distance between the talent as far as I'm concerned. Keep that jab going. Corley just can't deal with the jab. Particularly when Judah, as you pointed out, George, particularly when Judah doubles up on the jab. That's when Corley seems not to know what's coming next. That's the problem. Some guys are like that. You can jab them once, they can deal with it. But two or three jabs, they just throw everything they've done in training off. And like a lot of fighters, Judah will change speeds on the jab, sometimes just sort of laying it out there like that, and sometimes he'll flick it a lot faster. Only really takes another left hand upstairs. Judah steps in with a right upstairs and a right to the body. 
Judah hooking and now hits Corley with a big left flush on the chin. And Corley momentarily holds on as all the action is Zab Judah, faster hands, quicker release, commanding along the ropes. Judah is very good, but he still has to leave with his jab to start something off. But this guy is going to get him as well. Corley's best round was the second when he focused almost entirely on Judah's body. He has not had any effective body punching since that time. And upstairs, Zab Judah is simply quicker. Judah is in control of this fight with his hand speed and occasional left hook breaking through. That one stunned Corley momentarily. Just haven't seen enough chop chop from chop chop. Round five, one sided. Judah 21 out of 47, 45% connects, including 13 out of 34 jabs. Demarcus Corley only six out of 46. So Corley needs some new strategies. He needs to try something different because the rhythm of the fight hasn't changed much since the third round, and it's all Zab Judah. One thing about good boxers, they are so confident with their boxing ability, they will allow a guy after they knock them down to get back into the fight because they had let them hang around. Well, you saw the atmosphere in Judah's corner where his dad was singing to him, baby, baby, baby. Obviously, they feel as though they're so in control of the fight that Zab can just have fun out there. Zab with a little grin on his face as he doubles up on the jab again. We will not hurt the other guy. He will decide, look, I may as well hurt you. You're not doing anything to me. And I think that Carly can do this. He can get out there if he really wants and get a big shot. Unfortunately, he's not a big hitter. All right, bring out, bring out clean, bring out clean. Let's go. He thinks he's a bigger hitter than Zab Judo, or at least everything he has said leading up to the fight would indicate that. That may be a misperception. Only by him. Yeah. Once you put on those gloves, the guy sticks his chin out there, you can become a big hitter. Just hit the target. The bouncing. This is becoming a sparring session. That was that little left over him. And that's Corley making it possible, or rather, Judah making it possible for Corley to hit him by right. dancing and clowning with his hands around his waist. Sometimes when you knock a guy down and you get out there and spend a lot of energy, you don't have anything else in you but what uh, Judah is doing. Trying to pace yourself now that you make certain that you can go to 12 rounds. Sometimes when you think the fight is easy, you get a sudden rude awakening. But Zab Judah seems convinced that this presents no problems. And Corley steps forward and hits him in the face with a left hand. Can't play in boxing. Oh, Judah said, yes, you can. That was the double jab, and something happened. Does, does I'm Zab I'm Judah I'm think I'm this is uh, psychological Let's warfare? Does he think it's entertaining? Is he bored with the fight and he feels he has to do something? What, George? All of the above. <laughs> oh. I think he's trying to embarrass Corley. Part of the fun for him. Earlier tonight, another 140-pound prospect in action, Vivian Harris against Suleiman Mbai. And Harris, the favorite, 
guy who's regarded as a potential contender for Costa Zoo's 140 pound crown. Mai started out in a defensive mode through most of the first few rounds. Vivian Harris was able to knock him down in the second round. And through most of the fight, they worked in the same rhythm. Harris, an easy, unanimous decision victory over Suleiman Mbai, and that keeps Vivian Harris on track as a rising contender at 140 pounds. Crowded division, Let's go, man. Let's go. though Costa Zoo stands alone as the undisputed champ. Round seven begins. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> you know, Chip, that was the best imitation of Roy Jones Jr. I ever saw in my life. Zed Jr. in the sixth round leads in and starts shaking his shoulders, go, just like Roy Jones Jr. used to do. But I tell you something, he didn't do any punching. I thought Paulie out punched him in round six. So 58, 55, four rounds to two. Zed Jr., I thought Corley won round two. Give him round six because at least he threw some punches and the rest to Zeb. Give Zeb an extra point in round three for the knockdown. Stop, stop. Break out, break out, clean, break out, clean, step back. Step so back. you can get a great right. Harold Letterman review for the Roy Jones imitation, but it stop, doesn't stop. necessarily win you the round. Instructive. Instructive. Good hook by Cole. Needs to go back to the body. That's where he did the damage in the second round. That's how he easily won a round from Zab Judah, and that's what he hasn't done much since that time. Judah just pop, pop, popping poorly with the jab. Sometimes one southpaw is bad enough. Two southpaws can double your misery. <laughs> You mean you don't think this is the most rousing piece of ring combat you've seen in a while, Larry? Your words, Jim. <laughs> so you said something very interesting on the walk-in, Larry, when you said there's no way Costa Zoo would ever again provide Zab Judah a chance to fight him. I don't think he would. You know, Zeb Judah would have to build up a tremendous reputation so that there would be a lot of money at stake. This kind of fight is not uh, designed to build reputations and uh, bring in crowds. Zeb's style is not likely to ever galvanize the public in such a way that the money would become irresistible for Zoo. That's what you're saying? Yeah, and there are so many other, you know, uh, uh, potential opponents. Uh, Gaddy, among others. That's where the money is. We have Vivian Harris. He's going to have a rematch with Sean Bay Mitchell early next year. And he's uh, already about 33 years old. Vivian Harris just uh, re-entered the ring, incidentally, or re-entered the arena wearing an immaculate three-piece cream-colored suit. I believe he may be the dressing champion of the division. Or the dressing champion in street clothes, because, of course, I mean, look at the ring clothes that we're looking at in front of us. You know, Harris should uh, do to win. Harris might be an interesting fight in New York. Uh, both of them are from Brooklyn. Round seven, somewhat like its predecessors, and Vernon Forrest warms up in the dressing room, waiting for his second opportunity at Ricardo Mayorga. The first time around, Forrest says, I made every mistake in the book. I did not box with a guy who's not a boxer. I punched with a puncher. I brawled with a brawler. I slugged with a slugger. I won't do the same thing again. We'll see, as of course, Mayorga simply tries to impose his freewheeling, free-swinging, slugging style on the opponent and has the kind of in-the-ring bravado that makes it tough to resist fighting him. Seven rounds in the books between Zab Judah, there on your screen, and Demarcus Corley. Judah looking up to check his image on the jumbo truck. In the seventh round, Judah just two of seven power shots through 43 jabs, landed eight. Corley, seven of 21 power shots. If Corley doesn't start taking some aggressive steps 
soon. The perception will be that he's just uh, fighting out the fight and will accept the defeat rather than a knockout. right jabs now Judas better switch up a little bit can't fight this way and support 14 kids Judah is a very close friend of uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. I understand that when he uh, came to town recently, Mayweather picked him up at the airport. And we see some of the uh, boxing mannerisms of Mayweather. Um, who is a more classic boxer, a better boxer, really. But we see that Judah is uh, applying some of those things, the way he avoids punches, the way he avoids combat sometimes, and sometimes the way he erupts. Air those jabs. Can't be denied once he throws those jabs. More accurate puncher than Corley. Quicker than Corley most of the night. Able to be first when he wants to be first. Able to counter Corley when he wants to go back and counter. Hold ahead, hold ahead. Let's go, go, keep your head up. Let's go. Corley has decided to be the counter puncher tonight. He's waiting on Judah to do something, make a mistake so he can throw a shot. Well, sometimes you can wait three weeks for that to happen. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you don't have a title anymore. From about 15 rows back from the ring, Floyd Mayweather Jr. is standing and yelling instructions at Judah as Marcus Corley manages to hit Zab Judah with a right hand and drive him back into the corner, his best punch in a while. But under most circumstances, Judah would never be able to hear his friend Floyd Mayweather Jr. from that far away. You can see Mayweather standing back there. And Mayweather is urging July 26, a fight-themed night here on HBO, Larry. First, the HBO original movie Undefeated, directed by and starring John Leguizamo. It's about a rising boxer and how he deal, deals with his newfound fame. Then, live fights on boxing after dark. Fernando Vargas takes on Fitz Vanderpool in Vargas' first fight since his lost to Oscar De La Hoya last September. That's July 26. Undefeated starting at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Boxing after dark from the Olympic in Los Angeles at 945 with a raucous pro Vargas crowd all on HBO. And there's Floyd Mayweather Jr. as I mentioned shouting instructions to Zab from about 0, 12 15 rows away. Under normal circumstances Zab wouldn't be able to hear him but Entertainment value of the fight has slipped to a level where maybe Zab can hear every word Floyd is saying, or at least some of it. And after that bad incident with the with the referee, the last time they put the best referee in the in the, in the country, as far as I'm concerned, Joe Cortez in the ring. And Cortez hasn't had much to do. Is there hasn't no. hasn't been a lot of clinching, and there certainly haven't been any misbehaviors. Judas standing flat-footed now, looking like he wants to. Uh, Maybe test Corley. Good right to the body by Corley. One, two, three jabs. Corley can do nothing other than just go back and look at Judah. Jab again. Judah hasn't done a whole lot of body punching because that means that fight can turn at any time there's a hard punch land on his chin. You've got to go to the body when you're head on punch. Now Corley gets a chance and pops Judah with a little 
shot to the top of the skull. That was, we saw the chop chop after all. Yeah, that's right. Stop, 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 stop. Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go, don't walk back, let's go. He can chop, but can he make it stick? <laughs> Judah got lazy. Now just got to take heart. There you go, there you go, please. Come on, guys, you guys, you guys getting sloppy now. You're getting sloppy. Let's go. Even, even the referee is uh, a critic here, telling the fighters you're getting sloppy. Oh, he meant about throwing shots awkwardly behind the back, pushing. Get on, get on, get on. They had been pretty correct until oh, now, go, holding go, behind go, the head. That count on left, left, uh, straight left by Carly can change things if he wants. Judah's right hand is down all night. No, 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 come on, get the side out. No, hold no, hold him, let's go. So if he just throws that left on top of it, he can get him. What Corley hasn't done or hasn't been able to do is to step up his level of aggression to, to try to make it into more of a fight. And just change the tempo somehow. I can't imagine that he thinks he's going to beat Zab Judah fighting this fight at this moment. Hard right hand by Judah caught Corley. We told you it was a crowded division, the 140 pound weight class. Larry Merton, give us a look at some of the bigger names. Consensus of the top experts, Costa Zhu is the champion. He'll be fighting a rematch with Sean Bay Mitchell. Uh, Judah and Corley in there. Gaddy is now high on the list. Vivian Harris has cemented his position tonight. And also two new ones, uh, Paul Spatafora, who formerly held a lightweight belt, is moving up to this division. And Ricky Hatton, a rough, tough, strong British fighter, is uh, gaining some notice. Yoel Judas saying to Zeb Judah, walk him down, walk him down, go after him. Even he's bored with this. In the last three rounds, Zab Judah by CompuBox numbers has thrown 24 power shots, averaging seven per round. Harold, you awake over there? <laughs> Absolutely, Jim. 87-83, six rounds to three, Zab Judah. Jim, I'll tell you something. One thing that impresses me about Zab Judah, he snaps the right go, jab. Southpaw's notoriously pushed the right jab. This kid's got real good snap, real good hand speed. That's clean punching. Clean punching is 90% the scoring. Zab Judah is really scoring nicely with that right jab. He works it up and down. That's fact. Southpaws don't like to snap that those jabs. They really don't. Why is that, George? Uh, uh, they're always trying to make the other guy snap so they can counter him. But that is a point. Well, but Zab Judah snapping his right jab. Also because when they fight conventional fighters, the, the, the theory. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. Big left hand by Corley. Judah is still hurt. Zab Judah is hurt. Corley doesn't seem to know it, though. Just to finish the point, the perception is, is that you can't jab with a conventional fighter since both have to jab on the same side. So maybe that's why they get used to not throwing it out stiffly because ordinarily they're fighting conventional fighters. Michael Moore had a terrific jab as a southpaw. Right, George? Uh, yes, yes. He jabbed me <laughs> terrifically. Another left, that was a right hook that time. These Corley, punches Corley has landed two good punches in the round, but he doesn't follow them up with more aggression. Those punches can take their toll because Judas suffered uh, a devastation stop, stop, in his career already, and you'd never forget that coming back. Which is probably why he hasn't been more assertive tonight. Yeah, you got to get your confidence. His dad is telling him to move in and all of that, but you got to understand, let me take my time. That's what you want to say. 
Well, when you talk about devastation in Judah's career, of course, courtesy of Z Costa Zoo's thunderous straight right hand, and Corley doesn't have a weapon like that. And Corley can take over this fight now. He's got some hurt in there. Misses over the top of the left hand. Corley landing two solid blows in this round, his best round in a while. But Judah still pecking away. Judah's got his mock wide open. That's not a good sign. Judah smiling at us as if to say, I've got this thoroughly under control. After a one year layoff from the ring, Zab Judah is in position to come back and score a resounding and satisfying victory over to Marcus Corley. Two rounds to go. Chuck, Way too much. you're hitting him with good shots. Look at me, look at me. And then you're letting up. It's like, okay, I hit you, okay, I'm sorry. And you hit me. Hell with that. You gotta get mean, you gotta be steady and believe in you that you can do it. Matter of fact, your Uncle Tim is looking at this, and I'm quite sure he's dissatisfied. Come on, man, let's go. Let's go, dig down. Listen to me. You Don't reach. Title, Come on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Six, Six minutes, minutes, man. Oh, this side. Keep your hands up. More no, no, Go look for the other table. You, you see the food, man. Go get it. Together them combinations. Take this title. Let's take it, baby. Take it. Come on, man. Come on, let's go. We down. All right, seconds up. Let's get it going. Let's go. If Corley wins the last two rounds, he could make this a very close decision. And he does have the title. The title that's at stake here. Correct. I think even going the distance for Zab Judah is a big uh, victory, and especially if he can come on strong in these last two rounds. Why would that be, George? A year off having suffered a knockout, a real knockout. You got to watch those films. He's, he's seen those films. Confidence just doesn't grow in trees. Doesn't matter what your corner is telling you are, what kind of training camp you've had. You're dizzy, and it lasts until you get it from under you. Good one-two by Judah. And another combination there as Corley ducked in. Zab Judah going back to the accurate punching, which typified his dominance of the middle rounds. And throwing more power punches suddenly in this round. But those jabs are landing right on the button for Zab Judah and knocking Corley back and forcing him to reset his offense every time Judah pumps the jab into his face. And I think Zab Judah's corner should just let him pace himself. Just tell him, get out there, get some points. Let's Don't let's push go, him. Let's go, let's go. He's doing it anyway. in the last few seconds of these rounds that Zab Judah seems to fall prey to these hard shots. The best thing is to be a soldier, meet the guy in the middle of the ring, and so when the, the fight progresses, you are still in the, uh, away from the ropes. Hold the head, hold the head, let's go. The hands up, the hands That's up. what he meant about being sloppy. Your hands are free, guys. Your hands are free. Let's go. Your hands are free. Let's go. Corley trying a big right hook inside. Partially landed it. But Demarcus Corley has never really been able to hurt Zab Judah in the fight. And Judah did knock Corley down in the third round. And that is a big key to the working go, margin that Judah seemingly the enjoys. Corey is so successful when he goes with that overhand left after the jab that Judah throws. Corley missing and Judah following up with some excellent punches to the body and to the head. Zab Judah's had a very good round here in the 11th. Trying to finish strong, as George Foreman said, would be an accomplishment following the one-year layoff. 
Come on, man. Come on. This is it, man. Let's go. Like this. You see, open up, open up. Say it off me. Open up. Let me look busy. Let me look busy. Are you alright? Listen, you keep your hands. All you gotta do is keep your hands right here. The dog, like yeah. Keep the jab in front. Keep touching him. Keep touching him with that jab, baby. Let's take it big, jab. Big round. Big round. Look, I'm looking for. Look, guys, the last round. Touch him up. Last round, right? Come on. Let's go. Need this one. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Everything, Arthur. Round 11. In a round that you might think Demarcus Corley badly needed, and certainly his trainer Bernard Roach seemed to be telling him that before the round. Curly landed just seven out of 55 total total punches. Judah was 14 out of 53, seemingly widening his margin in the fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have it come to the 12? Okay, Jim, seven rounds to four, 106, 102, Zab Judah. You know, Jim, it was very interesting. I mean, Zab Judah had this fight won. All of a sudden, in round nine, he stops fighting. I mean, he just let Corley back in the fight in rounds nine and 10. But then, like you said, he had a big 11th round to win that. So Zab Judah is sitting at a four-point lead on my part based on clean punching. I have it a little close, closer than that, oh, but and it would take a knockout on my card to beat Judah, and that doesn't look like it's going to happen. I think if Judah can just land a five or six shots here, now his star is back again. Back in the big time. Seems to be a head on points, and he's still the aggressor. Only you knew what it takes to get back after being knocked out in a fight, and he was out. He was knocked out in November of 2001, then the six-month suspension. He finally came back June of last year against Omar Vice of Argentina and uh, knocked Vice down. That was the first time that Vice had tasted the canvas. Huge left hand by Judah there. Further command of the fight situation here in the last round. So he's coming off a long layoff. 18 months removed from that knockdown or right, knockout right, right, right. against Zhu that changed his career. And yes, a, a credible and useful performance for Zab Judah to reestablish himself in the division. And I think that he's back now. All he needed was that little extra confidence. Well, I just think he's made a, a good fight, clearly winning, but he's only partially restored. He's still a young man, 25 has a year or two to really put himself back up there if he uh, takes care of the business. And with Zoo getting up in years, in two or three years, uh, there's an opening in this division, or so it would appear. Corley just never found a consistent tactical strategy, a, a consistent bent that would have given him a chance to change the fight. And I'm not sure that he really tried hard enough to do anything really different. Hey, uh, we got Gotta give it to Zab Judah. He's smart. Boxes when he wants, bars when he wants, backs away, footwork, leaves the complete package. You never know how these decisions are going. You never know. Judges are Larry O'Connell of England. Ova Overson of Denmark and the veteran Jerry Roth from here in Las Vegas. We've seen a lot of Jerry Roth scorecards over the years. They are seldom a surprise. They usually reflect pretty much what you've seen in the fight. Here we are with a champion. Maybe behind, maybe keeps his title. Maybe the other guy didn't do enough in a lot of the judges' eyes. I think that that last statement is right on the money, George. Uh, Demarcus Corley goes into that 12th round. He's got to know that he's losing the fight. He throws 49 punches, lands six. Never really leaped in and started throwing everything, brawling, just trying to change the tempo and the progress of the fight. And you got to do that at some point. You got to do it, even though you're a champion. You still got to fight. And we mentioned. 
The three judges for this time. Oh, I totally, totally uh, screwed that up because I gave you the judges in Mayorga and Forrest instead of the judges who are scoring here. This is Chuck Jampa, Dwayne Ford, and Michael Pernick of Florida. Pernick we don't know that much about. Jampa and Ford, of course, are two very respected, longtime veteran judges here in Nevada. So a big surprise would be even more surprising with the panel of judges we got going here. And once again, let me just correct myself. Larry O'Connell, Ova Ovison, and Jerry Roth. That's the second fight, the one upcoming between Mayorga and Forrest. Our judges here are Jampa, Ford, and Pernick. The excitement here is palpable. <laughs> Jimmy Lennon Jr. is ready with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at the Orleans Arena, we go to the scorecards. We have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Dwayne Ford scores the bat 115 to 112 in favor of Demarcus Chop Chop Corley. <laughs> Judge at ringside, Chuck Joppa scores the bat 115 to 112 in favor of Zab Super Judah. Judge at ringside, Michael Pernick sees the bat 115 to 112 in favor of the winner and new champion, Zab. So just when I tell you not to expect a big surprise from that panel of judges, you get one score in favor of DeMarcus Corley that seems to come out of the proverbial left field, but the other two judges, at least in our view, restore a form of order, and Zab Judah returns to his position as a contender in the 140-pound weight class. Corley got the vote of one of the judges, but winds up with the second loss of his career. Final copy box numbers, Judah 136 out of 470 with a uh, sizable working margin on Corley, who was seen only to land 92. And Judah's jab was the dominant weapon in the bout, as George Foreman pointed out over and over. Judah able to do with his jab pretty much whatever he wanted, landing 26% and throwing nearly 400. Corley with 293 attempted jabs and landing only 14% at the end of the day. Those numbers make it a pretty clear victory for Judy. He winds up with a split decision, gets hold of a belt, and George, as you said, Zab Judah is back and reestablished at 140 pounds, looking down the road for more fights and more activity. That's really what he needs at this point. That leaves he can outfight, outdrink, and even outsmoke any man in the house. That go to hell attitude, with the punch to back it up, made him the welterweight champion of the world. Hard living, reckless fighters like Mayorga emerge as elite fighters once or twice a decade. In the 80s, Aaron Pryor broke down Mayorga's Nicaraguan countryman, the great Alexis Arguello, with his relentless attack and will. It's over. Aaron Pryor has retired his junior waterway championship. Drugs ended Pryor's career prematurely. In the 90s, Arturo Gatti, a swinging bachelor, swung into prominence with a series of melodramatic performances. Can you believe Arturo Gatti? Oh, Gatti. Oh. <laughs> what makes such free-spirited warriors so special is their willingness to take punishment, to find a way to turn adversity into opportunity. Mayorga absorbed heavy fire before vanquishing Vernon Forrest. Big round for Vernon Forrest. Mayorga came to his raw toughness the old-fashioned way. He was a street kid in Managua, where he is now hero number one. He graduated to a successful career as an amateur, then to the pros, where he lost three of his first 11 fights. He hasn't lost since then, nor has he lost any of the rough edges from his rough background. 
which includes the machismo of boastful self-confidence and the total contempt for opponents. Que vean dos asaltos, que con eso es que voy a defender mi título. I invite all Hispanics and all Americans to come July 12th and see two rounds of boxing. <laughs> what comes out of Mayorga's mouth, usually with a twinkle in his eye, is often as politically incorrect as what he puts into his mouth. And Vernon Forrest, with discipline and his well-schooled boxing skills, could close it for about a minute and a half. And as you pointed out, Larry, maybe the reason Mayorga said so many outrageous things this week is that Forrest was nowhere to be found in promoting the fight, made the point that he wanted to stay away from Mayorga, and that left Mayorga free at the podium to say whatever he wanted to say, and that means anything goes. George Foreman, the big question tactically going into the fight, can Vernon Forrest control Mayorga just by boxing him, or do you have to take risks to keep a guy like this off of him? Not at all. Last time, it was Forrest who started far the cleaner Mark. liver. Mayorga at 5'10 is tall for a welterweight. Mark. Vernon at 6 feet is very tall for Mark. a welterweight. Arm length is measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in within a pound of the welterweight limit of 147. Tonight, Mayorga has already gone up 14 pounds to 160, and he'll outweigh Forrest by six pounds in the ring. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Ricardo Mayorga Vernon Forrest fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Well, it's a far different mood this time around for Vernon Forrest, who admits that he did not have his...